Hello and welcome to eight must-have remote desktop features a presentation provided for you by NetOp. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sam Heine. I'm the Product Solutions Director for NetOp. Um, I've been with the company for just over 13 years. And before we get into today's topic, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and the company so you know who you're, who you're listening to. NetOp is a global organization. We've been in business for over 30 years working with some of the largest companies in the world. And that includes nearly a quarter of the world's largest retailers, almost half of the largest banks in the world, 50% of the Fortune 100 here in the United States, and nearly 60% of the Financial Times list of the largest companies in Europe. I'm presenting today from our offices in Portland, Oregon, on the west coast of the United States. But our worldwide headquarters and um, one of our primary offices is just outside of Copenhagen in Denmark, and we have offices in Switzerland, Romania, uh, Manila, and in some other locations here in the U.S. I look forward to talking with you today about this uh, feature about remote desktop. Um, but before we jump into that topic, I, I wanted to ask everyone viewing this presentation a quick question. And the, let me make sure that that question is popping up. What we'd like to know <clears throat> excuse me, is which remote desktop tools does your business use the most? So it really helps us to make sure that we provide relevant information if we can get a little bit of information back from you. So please answer those questions or answer that question, uh, and then we'll jump into today's topic. All right. Thank you for doing that. So let's talk a little bit today about eight must-have remote desktop features. Um, actually, before we jump in, let me make a, a point of letting everyone in the audience know uh, that if you have questions, there is a, a question panel provided by the webinar service here. And if at any point there's a question that you have, please feel free to write that down. And I'll reserve some time at the end to make sure that um, I do my best to answer all those questions. So if you've got questions from the audience, just enter them into the panel, and we'll make sure to answer those. I'm going to jump into the, the eight must-have features right now. And then I'm also going to show you a brief demonstration of our product at the end of this demonstration to show you how NetApp Remote Control incorporates those remote features, um, those must-have features into our NetApp Remote Control tool. But let's consider remote desktop software for a moment. It's, it's critical to modern computing. You use remote desktop and remote control software for monitoring, for controlling remote systems, for support and maintenance, for productivity and efficiency, and it is everywhere. There are popular tools like Microsoft's Remote Desktop. Um, remote Desktop Protocol, RDP, has been included with the Windows operating system since 1993. And today, 78% of global desktops are running Windows. So there's a really good chance that you are seeing interacting with remote desktop capabilities from Microsoft uh, on a daily basis. Another really popular tool is VNC. And VNC is the underlying technology has been distributed uh, as freeware for a long time now. And it's been distributed over a billion times. It is the, the default remote desktop and remote screen sharing tool that's built into tons of applications and operating systems. And with a billion uh, distributions, again, you're, you're likely running into VNC as a remote desktop solution, and, and it's probably being used in your organization on a daily basis. Um, it's, it's relatively new compared to RDP and VNC, but you also have really popular tools like TeamViewer. And TeamViewer, when you look at their website, claims that they're downloaded by 400,000 people every single day. So if you consider the, the, the value of remote desktop, but the, just the ubiquity of how often it's used, we know that it's become a target for hackers and criminals because it's so important. So these must-have features really focus on security, control, and how you can use the tools efficiency, efficiently. So let's jump in, like I said, let's jump into each of these eight features. And then at the end of this presentation, I'll walk you through a live demonstration to show you how NetOp Remote Control incorporates those features into our tool. 
Now the first, the first feature that we, that we are recommending, the first must-have feature, is all about security. And when, when you consider, again, the ubiquity of software, it, it's important to make sure that hackers and criminals don't use your tools against you. There was a really large breach um, just a few years ago where TeamViewer was targeted. And phone scammers would call up unsuspecting um, victims and convince them that they were part of their support team and then have them use the TeamViewer uh, software to gain access to their systems. It was a way to breach into networks and to steal data. So criminals are scanning networks today for open ports. They're trying to identify the best method of compromising your system. And once they get in, they try to use your own tools against you, literally just hiding in plain sight, using your network to collect data, exfiltrate it when no one is paying attention. So to keep your remote desktop tool from being the vehicle for a cyber attack, you want to make sure that the service, if you're using a service, is only connecting to the devices and the users that are authorized to use it. A secure deployment package is something that can ensure that the device connecting to your account is the right one. You know, most of us, if we're logging into a service, use a, a username and a password to make sure that we're accessing the right account and that we're authenticating into the system. Make sure that your devices are doing the same thing. If I'm trying to remotely access a, a server, an embedded device, or, or an unattended device, you want to make sure that when that device, when the, the host software is installed on that device, it is part of a, a deployment package that authenticates it into the service and makes sure that that device is approved. Similarly, if you're, if you're not using a, a service or a subscription-based cloud-based solution, if instead what you have is a perpetually licensed software over a, a LAN or WAN environment, you need to have a, a similar situation, a similar requirement. Rather than devices and users checking in with that central account service, make sure that they are part of a closed user group where the software is checking to make sure that the, the two endpoints are a part of the same group and are authorized to connect with each other. Having both endpoints as part of the same group really can dramatically reduce the chances of someone downloading the software and trying to impersonate one of your users. The second must-have feature is, is really all about advanced access controls. And when you think about security and network security and cybersecurity, it's all about layers of defense. Advanced access controls build on the secure deployment packages and those closed user groups by adding additional gates and additional layers. Now most of these are invisible to the user, so they don't create a burden to using the software or make it more difficult, but they do provide that extra layer of protection and security that we need to keep our networks and our devices safe. And the first is actually listed down at the end of those bullet points, and that's just limiting the number of password attempts. Most of us, if we're, if we're using online systems, we're used to you enter your password and you screw it up, and then ah, you, you do it a couple of times and finally you get it right. Well, if you have a, a system, and frankly, many remote desktop systems don't include this, you really need to build that in as a best practice because brute force password attempts, you know, if I, if I just try and guess your password over and over, eventually I might be able to break in. So having some of these little access controls go a long way to, to eliminate attacks. But beyond that simple um, password kind of limitation, you know, on the number of attempts, attempts there are other tools that you can use to really restrict access into your devices like IP filters where if I know that my, I, my help desk is, is supposed to be supporting a group of devices, I can define the IP address or the group of IP addresses that that help desk is located at and then make sure that anyone trying to access my remote devices is, is from the right location. If I know that my, my help desk and the people that are providing support to my devices are only you know, working Monday to Friday from 8 to 5, well, then I can put additional controls in saying, hey, I only want remote access sessions to be available Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So those date and time of day controls can be incredibly powerful to limit and secure your access as well. And when you're looking at a remote desktop tool, especially if you're working with vendors, you want to make sure that that date and time of day thing is, is available. 
if that vendor should only have access from Tuesdays from 2 to 3, if, if you don't have that type of control in place, there's a, an avenue for attack and there's a, an avenue for misuse that you don't have any control over. Finally, another really strong access control that we recommend and, and view as a must-have feature for your, your remote access tools is being able to define device groups and users and put users into groups and roles. Once you've provided access to a, a device and a user, you also want to make sure that not only are they getting access to the entire network, entire network, but just the devices that they should have access to. Right? So in our help desk scenario, it may be that the help desk really needs to provide support to a, a, all the devices in your network. But if, if you are a member of the, the sales or the marketing team and you need to remotely access your computer when you're away from the office, well then you shouldn't have access to every device in the network. You should access to a specific device group. So having the ability to create those device groups is really critical to protecting and preventing uh, misuse of your resources. Number three is centralized authentication. And you know, I mentioned earlier that hackers like to impersonate authorized users. And we looked at cybersecurity reports for 2018, and stolen usernames and passwords were the biggest threat to network, the biggest threat to network security. And it's, you know, it's easy to protect against this because the best way you can protect against that is really to centralize your authentication, to manage it aggressively, and to introduce multi-factor authentication when possible. There are a lot of remote desktop tools out there that have the ability to sync with Active Directory or, or call you know, and bind to LDAP. But for really next level security, you need a tool that provides, like I said, multi-factor authentication as well as that centralization. Even better is a tool that can integrate with multiple authentication services depending on your different user types. So for large organizations, you may be using Active Directory or AD Federation services for your employees, but those IT teams, they don't want to add vendors to their internal directories. So if you have a tool, and if your remote desktop tool offers the option of integrating with AD, but then allows you to maintain a separate user database, or can integrate with a RADIUS-based system for your vendors or your other users, you have options that open up for your IT team that really allow you to focus your authentication and enforce your rules based on what your business needs and not based on the capabilities of the software. So it's, it's not just centralizing your authentication that's important here, but making sure that you have the option for multiple authentication types and multiple centralized authentication types. Let's look at number four, application whitelisting. Now, authenticating users is important, right? But once you've done that, once you're sure they are who they say they are, it's important to place limits on what they can access. Companies these days have a variety of both internal and external users, those vendors and contractors. And our employees need to remotely access resources, but the vendors, the consultants, the service providers, they have to access those computers remotely as well. And those computers they're accessing don't run just one application. You don't want the company servicing your printers to access your payroll. With application whitelisting, you can define the specific applications that a remote user can access during a remote desktop session. Remote desktop software, it doesn't need to give you or the user access to the entire desktop. It really should limit that user to only the applications and resources that they need to get the job done. You know, cybercrime has been growing for a decade, but one of the most publicized breaches of the last five to ten years happened back in 2014 when Target, a really large retailer here in the U.S., was hacked, and tens of millions of their customers had data stolen. The hackers were able to breach the network through an HVAC, a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning vendor. And then they used remote access software to get into the network, create a beachhead, access point-of-sale systems and others, and, and, and really move around and steal a bunch of stuff. And I just imagine all the headaches, all the financial distress, the, the stock price for Target. If they had had multi-factor authentication, application whitelisting in place, it may have prevented some of that misuse and saved a huge headache for, for literally millions of people. If we move forward to number five, 
the number five must-have feature for remote desktop and remote access software is about secure tunneling. And I was just speaking about a, an HVAC, a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning vendor. And often the tools that those vendors need when they're remotely accessing a system, they aren't locally installed. So, or, or if they are, those tools may require special ports, unusual communication pathways to operate. This is especially true for production systems like HVAC or building automation systems. If, or, or think about um, tools on a factory floor. If you're providing remote access or remote desktop software into a production system like that, you really need to have the ability to provide a secure tunnel as a part of that solution. More often than not, secure tunnels are provided by VPNs. You know, so the, the traditional method is for companies to open up a VPN and give a VPN to a vendor so they can access the network and then run those um, specialized tools or potentially even the remote desktop tool through the VPN. But at NetOp, we, re we recommend a different approach. Why give access to an entire network segment, which is what a VPN does, when you can give them access to just the device they need and then allow a secure tunnel into that specific device? Now don't get me wrong. VPNs have their place, and, and we've got a, an entire uh, workbook and prior webinar talking about the difference in when to use a VPN versus remote access tools. But we know that VPNs have a number of scenarios where managing the VPN is more complicated, it's less secure, and it just doesn't make sense. So in those cases, rather than giving that VPN, select a remote desktop solution that has the integrated secure tunnel so that you can have that one solution providing the access and the security that you need. Number six, flexible configurations and integrations. Knowing, to when, <coughs> knowing when to use a VPN or when to use remote access or remote desktop software can be tricky, um, which is why must have feature number six is, is all about flexible configurations and integrations. Your company is going to use a VPN. I, you know, we already said that, and we can't avoid them. They're, they're a great tool. You may also have ticketing software or IT service management software. There's, there's lots of things in the enterprise that are happening and lots of tools. And you need to make sure that you're selecting a remote desktop solution that plays nicely with your other solutions. So direct integrations with well-known platforms are great. Um, for, in, for example, NetOp offers a variety of integrations with big ticketing systems, ServiceNow, uh, Zendesk, uh, you know, others of that nature. But it is also really important for whatever solution that you choose to, to fit into your overall system and all of the, the different tools that you are using, not just through direct integrations, but in support and configuration for your network topology, topography, and the way you have that network created. All too often, we see security holes and network threats because organizations are trying to make their software work in a way that it just wasn't designed for. If you choose a tool with the flexibility and options you need to fit your network, then you won't need to compromise your security in the process. And if you just go out and find an off-the-shelf solution that you then try to shoehorn into the organization, it's a real challenge. So look for tools that have configuration options, that have different modules, that can really support the, the network segmentation, the VLANs, and all of the stuff that you have in your organization so that you provide rock-solid security and uh, access and productivity without compromising your security. Next to last, number seven is a centralized dashboard. And when we talk must-have features, centralization is important. Um, you know, we mentioned it in number three with centralized authentication. And like having the ability to centralize your authentication, you want the ability to manage and monitor your remote desktop tools um, from a central dashboard or console. When you're supporting a few machines, it's easy to deal with them individually. But as you begin to support tens, hundreds, thousands, or like some of NetOp customers, hundreds of thousands of devices, having these administrative tools available from a central console is critical. Being able to see what is going on and to manage that tool from one location, it's, it's not just more efficient, but it's also more secure because it simplifies the process and gives you that one point of control. Our final solution, or solution, our final recommendation, um, our final must-have feature 
is robust locking. And to be compliant with regulations like PCI DSS, uh, the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation in Europe, um, the HIPAA regulations here in the U.S., you need good logs. Those are required to show who did what to which device at a specific time, and they're required to be compliant with those regulations. But we need to go beyond just logging for requirements for compliance, because when you're talking remote desktop, you're talking about screen sharing. Right? And a key feature of remote desktop is, is sharing that screen, the keyboard, and the mouse. So with remote desktop software, you need video logging that shows exactly what happened during a session. What screens did they access? What did they see during that session? If you have those video logs, you get a, a much truer and more honest picture of what happened during those remote, co remote control or remote desktop sessions. It's also important that those logs can't be altered or deleted. A favorite tactic of hackers is to break into a system, delete or change the event logs to hide their activity, and then act like nothing happened. So make sure that your remote desktop software includes an unalterable audit log which can capture administrator activity, which can capture those, those changes that go in um, and would potentially be used to hide or delete the logs. If you've got that in place, I mean, hopefully you won't ever need those logs. But if you do need them and you don't have them, you're in a world of trouble. Well, all right, folks, that's it. That's eight must-have features. First, we're starting with that closed user group or secure deployment packages to make sure that people aren't using the software against you. The second is to have advanced access controls to really limit who is accessing those devices and putting in granularity and, and layers of defense. Third is to have good centralized authentication. Make sure that the people coming into your network are the people who they say they are. And fourth is when they get there, really control not just who and how they access, but make sure that you put effective permissions in place for what they're doing when they access those devices. Especially for your manufacturing or production systems, whether it be ATMs or point of sales or factory floors, you want secure tunneling built into your tool so that you don't have to use additional software or a VPN. Number six, get that flexibility up front. Choose a solution that has the flexibility to configure the solution for your network and not vice versa. You don't want to try and cram your network into something that isn't, that isn't designed for it. Finally, you've got the last two, centralize your administration and have good robust logging with, with video logging and unalterable audit logs. There they are, eight specific must-have features. Now, it's easy to put those up on a screen and talk about them, but I think it really also helps to show how those, how those can be deployed. Um, if you want to, to have a copy of those eight steps, those eight must-have features with some descriptions, I would encourage you to download the guide. You should be able to download that directly from uh, our, our webinar presentation software, or you can go to our website and download those must-have remote desktop features. And once you've done that, or you can do that right now, we'll then do a quick little product demonstration. So let me start sharing my screen, and we'll see if we can't show you how this works for NetApp. All right. You should we're, – we're preparing the screen share now. All right. You should be looking at my desktop now. And what I have up in my browser is the NetApp Remote Control Portal. So this is our, our, our cloud-based um, secure access solution for NetApp Remote Control. It's a – think of it like a switchboard that connects your remote users to your remote devices. And I have a little demo space here that I've created um, with just a single device. Um, and so I have, well, I guess, one device online. And if I take that filter off, you can see that I also have um, one device that's currently offline. But what I wanted to show you from, from our perspective is, is really how we use those eight must-have features. So if we start first with closed user groups, that, that first one, and secure deployment packages, I'm going to drop down here into downloads. And we don't want organizations to be able to download NetApp Remote Control and then to use that to attack our customers who are using NetApp Remote Control. So a deployment package really allows an administrator to specify how many devices do I want this 
this deployment package to go out to? How, how many devices do I want to attach to my account? Um, once I've done that, do I want to enable or disable that package? So if I'm going to do a bunch of deployments on a specific day, then I'm going to have that package enabled. And then when I'm not doing any installations, I can disable the package so that people can't use it. I can embed license keys if need be. Once I'm enrolling that, I can move them into specific device groups, um, which is part of number two, must have feature, have good in access control and device groups. I also have the option of an enrollment state here where I can put them into a pending enrollment state. And what pending means is an administrator needs to verify that the device attempting to communicate with the portal is the device that I actually want. So lots of control here to make sure that the devices that are attaching to this account are the devices that I want um, and haven't, you know, haven't been spoofed or, or no one's trying to, to pull a fast one on me. So secure deployment packages, and um, if you were deploying this in a, an on-premise an on solution, it would be something similar called a closed user group. One of the other, you know, before I, um, before I get too far into it, one of our other must-have features is to have a centralized dashboard. I think that was number seven. This is the centralized dashboard for NetApp Remote Control Portal users. And you can see that it provides me with how many total devices do I have attached, how many users, um, how many user groups, what's the activity right now. I can see recent updates um, as well as video tutorials on how to use the software. I have all of these access controls on the left so that I have one area that I can come in, manage, and, um, and organize my remote access tool. Talking specifically about security, we've got multi-factor authentication, again, which is part of that number three centralized uh, authentication. But for centralization, we also have the ability to add AD Federation Services, Azure AD, LDAP Binding, or what I'm using is just an internal authentication method. So when you, again, when you consider how to centralize and add authentication to your remote desktop tool, being able to use an internal tool, which is just simple username and password, but to combine that with these managed, secured, and centralized uh, user uh, directories like ADFS and LDAP binding, again, gives a, as a remote administrator, gives me a ton of tool and, tools and capabilities uh, for managing my network. Um, we've got devices, you know, and uh, I said devices, uh, groups. There are groups of devices and groups of users that I can create to again flush out my, my, the granularity for my access controls. Um, secure tunneling is difficult to show because I don't have any applications, so we'll, we'll skip over that. But in terms of flexibility, again, I, I, I really want to show how I set up my devices how I can set up my role assignments for my different users. So I have a variety of different assignments where I can create a group of users and a group of devices, and then I can assign specific roles to those different groups of users and devices. And having the flexibility to create hundreds or, or even thousands of different role assignments really allows me to craft a permission strategy for my organization that is completely customized to my needs, completely customized to this organization. So there's tons of flexibility and granularity in how those security permissions are rolled out, and that gives organizations, hopefully like those of you who are, who are watching now, the ability to customize the software specifically to your needs. So that was number six, flexible configurations and integrations. Um, Number eight was robust logging. Again, if we go back into security, I have logging enabled, and I can go into my log files and create custom reports that show me exactly who did what, when, and where. And while those reports, my, my video logging isn't shown here, I have a separate module available that will show me uh, central video recordings for all of those remote sessions if, if I choose to enable those. So, I promised that I would save some time at the end to answer questions. I've gone through our eight must-have features and just a quick little demo of the NetApp Remote Control Portal to show you how some of those security features are focused in and used in NetApp Remote Control. But let me jump back into kind of the, the slides of our presentations and ask, 
what do you guys want to know? Let me see if there are specific questions from the audience about how to configure, what are the must-have features, what should you be talking about in terms of remote desktop software. Remember there is a question panel in the, in the, the presentation software and the webinar software, so if you have a question, jump in there and let me know. Um, I, do have, <laughs> I do have one question right now. Um, I had mentioned TeamViewer, a real popular a remote desktop tool at the beginning of this presentation. And the question from the audience is, what's the biggest difference between NetApp and TeamViewer? Um, and, and I'll tell you, I, I think the biggest difference is really about flexibility and security. TeamViewer makes a great tool. It's incredibly easy to use, which is why it's so popular. But they've had challenges um, with security. They've had challenges with controls for organizations. And NetApp works with, you know, like I said, really big retailers and really big banks. And those organizations who are security focused um, typically aren't using TeamViewer in their production areas. They're, they're really looking for a tool that's just rock solid from a security standpoint that is not open to the Internet, that can be completely air-gapped and closed off if necessary. And NetApp Remote Control provides you those options. We, we simply have more security controls and more security options, more flexibility from a deployment standpoint, whether it's in the cloud with our portal or as a completely on-premise solution. We, we're, we're just designed more for the enterprise, a secure enterprise in that way. So that's what I would say is the biggest difference between NetApp and TeamViewer. Let me see if there are any other questions. Um, doesn't look like it. We do have a little bit of time left, so if there, if there are questions and you want to put them in there, please, uh, please feel free to do so. Okay, I see one more question that just popped in, and it says, do we need just the web portal for NetApp to function, or would you also need an on-premise server? Which is an excellent question. Um, it's an either or. In fact, um, you don't need a server to run NetApp at all. Um, if you're in an on-premise location, a variety of, you know, a number of our customers um, just download our, our two primary components, which are the guest and the host. And a, a host gets installed on your remote device, and the guest is what you would install on your desktop. And the guest to the host is where the connection is made. Once you have multiple systems set up, I mean, if you have more than a few remote devices, we recommend for your on-premise deployment that you include a NetApp security server. That's an on-premise server that centralizes your administration, centralizes your logging, um, really allows you to do the integrations with all of your Active Directory or your, your directory, you know, whatever directory you're using. So NetApp Remote Control on-premise has a security server. Or if you want to use the cloud-based solution, you've got NetApp Remote Control Portal. And that's designed, if you, if you want us to host that server architecture, right? If, if you don't want to be bothered by setting up a, a server and dedicating it to your remote access tool, we've already done that. And you can do that through our solution, the NetApp Remote Control Portal. And the portal is available um, as a multi-tenant, just open you know, cloud. I mean, it's very secure, but it's available to all. Or we have a virtual private cloud offering that allows you to have basically a data center extension where it's dedicated to just your organization. So again, lots of options, lots of flexibility in how you use the system, whether that be on-premise um, or in the cloud. We have some customers that are doing a hybrid approach where they have both set up for internal, they're using their on-premise, and then for their external users, they have, um, they have that cloud solution. So again, depending on the needs of your organization, you can set up the solution to, to do a lot of different things. We've got one more question coming in now, which is, what is your pricing model? Um, do you have subscriptions, or can licenses be purchased outright? And um, the answer to that question is both. NetApp Remote Control has both perpetual licenses for our on-premise solution and software as a service or subscription pricing um, that allows you to um, use and access the, the portal. Again, you can combine those. We have some customers that are purchasing both on-premise solutions for some of their users and then subscriptions for others, um, and those can be combined in interesting ways. The subscription is uh, going to be a little bit less money up front um, with real reasonable pricing as an annual subscription. Um, but if you are 
making an investment in security and you want to lock that in for the next three to five years, you can buy perpetual licenses where you own them outright and get them installed in your network today, and we'd be happy to help you figure out how to do that. All right, any other questions? We've got a little bit of time left in the webinar. Um, so if you a question, please drop it into the <laughs> drop it into the question box and we'll answer it. Um, if not, I would also encourage you to just reach out to us here at NetOp. You can go onto our website um, and contact us. Uh, it's pretty simple to just hit the Contact Us button and send us a note or reach out. Like I said, we've been in business for over 30 years working with some of the largest companies in the world and figuring out how to configure networks, how to configure remote access and remote desktop solutions to meet the needs of the customer in a secure way. That's what we do every day. So please let us know if you have additional questions and we will get, uh, get those answers to you just as quick as we can. Thank you all for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate your time and consideration for NetOp. Um, and I've got one more question that popped in. I'll answer that before we take off. Um, and it looks like the, the question is, how does NetOp support users who are working externally and do not have access to internal networks via VPN, for example? Well, th that question, I mean, it's, it's a good question, and that's exactly what we do. So with remote access and re NetOp remote control, you don't need a VPN. Um, the system is designed to provide you remote access with, um, without a VPN, and it's done through uh, our, our portal, so through the NetOp Remote Control portal, um, or through um, a variety of different mechanisms, those modules that you install on your network. So NetOp has a, a, a system with the portal where there are no open uh, inbound ports, so it's incredibly secure. Um, you as a user will access the, the portal and you'll say, hey, I'm here. Your devices will access the portal and say, hey, I'm ready. And that portal acts as kind of a little switchboard operated to connect the two. We have similar kind of routing mechanisms built for your local area networks or your wide area networks so that you can establish secure remote connections either across the network or across the Internet. And NetOp does that all with, with our remote desktop technology without using a VPN. In the next question that we just popped in was, does NetOp help me to obtain security compliance for my organization? And when you're, when you're trying to figure out, should I use a VPN or should I create my own remote access uh, gateways, doing that in a compliant, pas compliant fashion um, is very important. Our expertise is in remote access and remote control. So we will definitely help organizations be compliant with this tool set, but we don't provide broader security consulting or compliance consulting. Right? So if you are a, a financial institution or a retailer and you want to be PCI compliant, well, you need to follow some steps with your remote access tool. Uh, depending on the, the, the zones that you have um, established in your – or the, the network segments that you have, you may need to have multi-factor authentication. You may need to have certain network segmentation for your remote access tools. And we will help you kind of establish those and figure those out. But there are a variety of other recommendations for PCI that just go beyond what NetOp does. So we'll help you with compliance, but we aren't a, an auditing firm or an accounting firm that comes in and does the full security um, overview. All right, friends. Again, I really appreciate you joining us. If you have other questions, please jump onto the website and let us know. Um, but that's going to be it for today's presentation. Let us, uh, let us know how we can help. Go ahead and download that guide so you get these eight must-have features and you can share them with your colleagues. And I look forward to uh, talking with you um, on another day or, or real soon. So thanks again and have a great day.